Yes, I just wanted to respond to a Vice video that I saw recently which explored the reasons that Latinos are converting to Islam. So the Latino community, the Latin American community in the USA, they are the largest ethnic group among the converts to Islam. According to recent statistics, they are the largest ethnic group converting to Islam. And this video explored what motivates this ethnic group to come to Islam. Right? And one particular Catholic priest within the video, he said that the chief reason for the conversion of this ethnic group to Islam is the demonization of white culture. Right? So he said that white people, white culture, is being demonized. And that's why people are converting away from Christianity and white culture. So let's explore this. If you look to what occurred in the past, let's look at history, the history of Christianity in the West. You find that the arrival of the white Christians to the Western Hemisphere was closely follow followed by the genocide of the people of the Western Hemisphere. You have the, the Native Americans, the Amerindians, the Native people of the Western Hemisphere were almost completely wiped out. Right? They used to thrive here in the millions before the Christians arrived. The white Christians came here and they immediately began plundering, raping, mass murdering, enslaving until these people were no more. And this, this is simply what happened in the past. They, they wiped out an entire hemisphere of people. And then soon after, when you find they had no one left to enslave, they, they began bringing in the African people through the Atlantic slave trade. Right? And this is race-based slavery that was perpetrated by the white Christians. And throughout all of this, you have the Christian popes and kings. They were okay with this. Right? They even justified this using the Bible and the scriptures. In the case of the Amerindians, forced con conversion to Christianity was an actual justification for these missions and, 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 and these conquests. And in the case of the Africans, you have the curse of Ham using, being used to justify the, mistreat, the mistreatment of the, the African people. Right? They said that these people are cursed. Right? The curse of Ham, which is found in the book of Genesis, chapter 9 of the Bible, was applied to black people, and it, it was said that black people are cursed. So the, so these actions perpetrated by white Christians, they were scripturally justified. Right? So this is the issue we are facing here. So let's look at today. Let's forget about history and let's look at what's happening today. You have the Black Lives Matter movement. Right? They, they are sort of fighting for the rights of black people, trying to proclaim that black lives matter. Right? And, and this should go without saying, you know, all lives matter. And it, but it seems that the American people need to be told that black lives matter. Because you have the police officers and members of the general public gunning down and, and murdering black people and facing no consequences for doing so. Right? You, you, you have black people actually being mistreated, you know, and this is a, 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 a part of the society that black people are less than other people. You have them being the majority in the jail, even though they are the minority outside of the prison. They are the majority inside the prison. They have the communities being plagued by, you know, over-policing. Right? They have a lot of narcotics, drugs being pumped into these communities, these ghettos, such that the people cannot even thrive. And they are stereotyped. They are seen as less than human. They, they face racism every day. And it's the same with the Latino community, right? The Latino community, they face the same sort of racism, you know, the same sort of hate. You have the President of the United States describing them as criminals, describing the Mexicans as, as, a, as you know, less than the American people. They are described as, as troublesome people, he even wanted to build a wall, right? An apartheid wall to separate the American people from the Mexicans. Are they saying that they just come in here to cause trouble? The same sort of narrative and rhetoric that was expressed by Hitler and other racists. Right? You have the President of the United States expressing these sentiments. 
and the Catholic community, the Catholic, Catholic leadership is not coming to the rescue of the Latino people. Right? The majority of the Latino people are Catholics. But yet still the, the Catholic clergy, you know, the Catholic leadership is not coming to their rescue to defend them against these claims being made against them by the American president and these views being held by the majority of the American people because they voted for this American president after he made such racist claims and pronouncements. Right? So the Catholics are not defending them just as the Catholics did not defend the Amerindians. They did not defend the Africans. No, the Catholics are not defending the Latino people. Right? So, clearly, this religion of Christianity is an ethnocentric religion, is a Eurocentric religion in which the white people, they occupy a position that is lofty and supreme. You know, there's white supremacy in Christianity. And if we look at why this is so, right, you find that the Christians, they take a pity of a man. And they say that man is God. The scriptures say do not make a graven image. But yet still, you know, all the Christians do this. But the, the Catholics, they, they especially do this. They take images, sculptures and paintings of Caucasian figures. Whether they be saints, whether it be the mother of Jesus, Mary, or Jesus himself. They take pictures of these people, depict them as Caucasians. And they say that these people are divine. Yeah, they encourage you to pray to these people, pray to the saints, pray to Mary, pray to Jesus. And they even equate some of these people with God. Right? So if God is the supreme being, all of us would agree. Nobody would disagree in saying that God, the creator of the universe, is the supreme being. Right? If you, if you take a picture of a Caucasian man and you hang it up on your wall and you say that is God, or you make a sculpture of a Caucasian man and you say that is God, then you're saying that Caucasians are supreme. Right? If, if you look at your little three or four year old daughter or son, and from that young and tender age you tell them that that, that image is God, then you are immediately and permanently making a connection between the image, right? Which is the, the image of the Caucasian and supremacy. So you are perpetuating white supremacy when you tell your little child that that image of a Caucasian is supreme. Right? This is what you are doing. And this is tapping into the roots of racism and, and the caste system within Christianity. Right? It's an unwritten caste system. It's, it's, it's sort of subconscious. Right? That you, if, you, if you go to Google Images right now and type in Jesus or you type in God, you'll see a lot of images of Caucasian people. Right? And... and this is what these people perpetuate throughout the world, right? They perpetuate images of Caucasian people and say that these Caucasian images are gods, right? And this is what you are asked to believe. This is what is presented to you in Christianity and more so the Catholic faith, right? So this is, this is causing an issue. And people who don't look, who don't resemble those images... They are sort of ostracized. You find that they are treated as other, other than and less than because of how they look. So, I would agree with the Catholic priest in saying that white culture has been demonized. But, this has not been demonized other than by the white people themselves because they are the ones who committed the unjust actions towards other members of humanity throughout the ages. It is they who caused the, who perpetrated the genocide of the Amerindian people, the enslavement and genocide of African people, and they continue continued even after the abolition of slavery, right? To, to, to lynch and, and, and mob black people. You know, there was apartheid segregation. Black people could not ride on the same, on the same, um, could not go in the same restaurant. As a white person, they had to sit down in the back of the bus. There was all this racism perpetrated by white Christians towards non-white people throughout the ages. And this, this is Christian history. Right? You have apartheid going on in South Africa until recently. 
So racism, segregation, apartheid, all of this has been part of, part of, of, of white culture and Christianity throughout the ages. So what am I to do? I'm a black man, right? My skin has more melanin than that of a Caucasian. My hair is tightly curled, right? I have a, a nose that is wider than that of a Caucasian man. So what am I to do? Am I to, to, to try to fight for equality in a religion that sees me as lesser than? You know, they call me names. They want to shoot me and kill me. You know, they really don't care if I live or die. What am I to do? Am I supposed to straighten my hair and bleach my skin and put blue contacts in my eyes to try to look like you? No. I don't want to have, to, I don't want to have anything to do with a religion such as that, that, that holds one race superior and another inferior. Right? And the problem is that it's scripturally justified and it's perpetuated through the imagery and the idolatry. Right? So... There's, that, there's a problem that arises through the corruption of the religion. You have the Christians introducing polytheism and idolatry into their religion when these things are forbidden according to the scripture. You have the, the, the practitioners of the religion, right, in introducing racism and, and one race being cursed and having to be a servant of the other race and all of that. The curse of Ham, go we'll read it in Genesis 9. You know, so I, I don't want to have anything to do with polytheism, idolatry, tribalism, racism, all those things. I, I don't want to have anything to do with that. Right? I just want to serve God. So, let's look at the real reasons why people convert to Islam, away from Christianity. The reason that the, the priests give is a reason, but it's not the top reason. Right? I would say it's probably fourth or something like that. The first reason, I would say, is the polytheism within Christianity. The Bible is clear, explicit, in saying that the Lord our God is one God. God said in the first commandment, Thou shalt have no other God before me. He said in Isaiah, There is no God beside me. There is no God be be before me. There is no God after me. You understand? He, God alone is God and there is no one else. Right? The oneness of God is emphasized throughout the scripture. You find even in the even in the in the in the in the gospels, when Jesus came, he did not change this 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 concept of God. He said that here, O Israel, the Lord our God is one God. He repeated the words of Moses exactly when Moses said the same thing in, in Deuteronomy. Jesus said, Here, o, here o Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. So the belief that God is three beings cannot be justified in the scripture is, is, is really a corrupt doctrine that came after the scripture you find that this whole concept of the trinity originated in the fourth century it cannot be found in 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 any in practice any time before the the, the the fourth century it is something that was invented and and sort of imposed upon the christian people by politically motivated figures Right? You find the, the Council of Nicaea is when this doctrine of the Trinity right, was ratified and imposed upon the people. It was supported by military suppression of other beliefs. Right? So people who were monotheists, people who believe that God is one and that Jesus is not God, the one who Jesus bowed down to is God. People who believe that was deemed as heretics, such as Bishop Arias. The early Christians did not believe in any trinity they believe in one god right so the trinity doctrine is a corruption and jesus himself he did not preach any trinity he never asked the by in the entire bible does not say that god is a trinity right jesus said that god is one and he said that god is his god jesus said that our god is his god right he said that I come that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. So if the one who sent Jesus is the only true God, how can Jesus be a God if the one who sent him is the only true God? Right? Jesus also said that, Touch me not, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. Go now and tell my brethren that I ascend to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. 
So my father, your father, my God, and your God. So Jesus is saying that our father, the one who he taught the Christians to pray to, our father, right, is my God and your God. Right, it's clear that God is his God too. Your God is also his God. This is what he said. And there's many other things he said, right? He said clearly that he's a prophet. He said a, a, a prophet is not without honor, except within his own household, among his own people. He identified himself as a prophet. And even the people knew he was a prophet. When the priests and whatnot wanted to kill Jesus, you know what the Bible says? The Bible says that they wanted to kill him, they wanted to arrest him, but they were afraid of the people because the people held that he was a prophet. So, over and over in the Bible, you're having Jesus identifying himself as a prophet, the people saying that Jesus was a prophet. So, that's what he was, a prophet, a self-proclaimed prophet. He never claimed that he was God. And wherever people assume this, that's all it is, an assumption. Jesus never said that he is God. He never said to worship him either. Right? And in fact, in the Quran now we know that this is impossible for a person to say to worship himself. It's impossible. Right? So, the Quran says, Makana li basharin ayatiyahu lohu kitaba wal hukma man nobu water it is not possible for a person to whom is given the book and wisdom and prophethood. Right? Jesus was given the book and wisdom and prophethood. And the Quran is saying it is not possible for such a person to say to people, Be my worshippers. Instead of Allah. Right? So this is impossible. It is not possible for a person who is given the book and wisdom and prophethood to say, Be my worshippers instead of Allah. Right? So, in the Bible also say this, that if a, if a prophet were to invent sayings, right? If, if somebody were to say things that did not come from God, God would cause them to die. Right? And the Quran also says this. So, when people read the Quran, they see monotheism, that there's only one God. And this is familiar to anybody who is familiar with the scriptures, that there's only one God. And not three beings as, as the Christians preach. And when somebody reads the Quran, they see that idolatry is forbidden. You're not supposed to pray to any creature, any sculpture, any sort of imagery. Right? We don't practice these things. Right? And then you come to the concept of salvation in Christianity. You attain salvation by believing that Jesus died for sins. And when you really examine this, you find that this is not justice. Because what this is saying is that if you believe that Jesus died for your sins, then it doesn't matter if you're a murderer, a rapist, a thief. None of these things matter. You just have to believe that Jesus died for your sins. And I sat in this house right here. And three houses away, there was a Christian crusade going on. And there was a pastor. He was preaching that you're not going to make it to paradise based on your good deeds. You're going to paradise based on your belief that Jesus is God and he died for your sins. This, was, this is what he was preaching on a loudspeaker, three houses away. Clearly, this is the message of the Christians. So, when you really examine this, this doesn't make any sense. Right? There's no punishment for doing wrong and there's no incentive for doing good. All you have to do is believe something according to this teaching and you're going to paradise. Right? Think about this. This doesn't make any sense. If I were to believe this, then I could be promiscuous, alcoholic. I could be a thief and just say I believe that Jesus died for my sins. And then I would therefore believe that my past and future sins are covered. They are, they are, they are absorbed by this action of Jesus dying for my sins. So therefore, I will not try to reform myself. I will not give up the alcohol. I will not... You know, I will not try to be good at all because according to what the preacher said, according to what Paul said, you know, this is a doctrine that they take from Paul, who's not a prophet, by the way. 
my deeds don't matter. It's not true. The, the works of the law, you'll, you'll attain salvation. Is what Paul said. And this doctrine of Paul, which has been taken up by the Christians, they take it up and run with it. This directly, con directly, con directly contradicts the doctrine of Jesus. Jesus taught people to repent in the Bible. Right? He taught people to repent. Why would he tell people to repent if he died for their sins? Right? Jesus said that until heaven and earth shall pass away, not one jot of the law shall be removed. Right? So, Jesus always maintained that the com commandments are to stay in place. He said, if you want to enter life, keep the commandments. So, Jesus was a commandments man. He was a man who recited from the commandments. Right? He, he preached that the Lord our God is one God. That's the most important commandment. Then, he, then he, he, he continued to preach from the Ten Commandments that Moses brought. Right? He said that I did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill it. So, clearly, this whole teaching that the commandments is abolished, you know, this is a, a, a false doctrine. Because if that is so, then nobody has to be righteous. So come to Islam, you'll find monotheism, that the Lord our God is one God. You'd find that, that there is no idolatry or polytheism. You'd find that the doctrine of salvation is that you are responsible for your own sins and your own actions. Right? So therefore, you are supposed to live in accordance with the commandments of God and try your best to be righteous. And if it is you do wrong, you seek forgiveness from God. God is the one who can hear you. He can forgive you. Right? So whenever you fall into wrong, you remember Allah, you remember your Creator, and you seek forgiveness for your sins directly from him and you're, and you're trying not to repeat these actions that you're seeking forgiveness for right and, and you generally reform yourself Islam is a religion that reforms a person you always hear stories of people who are into all sorts of untoward lifestyles and when they come to Islam they're truly reformed because Islam is a religion that holds you accountable right and you encourage to constantly remind yourself you pray, you pray five times a day. You know, say so always reminding yourself of your purpose. You know, you're reminding yourself of, of the day of judgment coming. And you're always keeping yourself accountable and seeking forgiveness. Right? According to the Christian belief, someone died for your sins. So therefore, you can go out there and have a good time. You can party and drink and, and you know, engage in all those immoral activities and gamble and all those things. And according to the Christian, someone will take all of that from you. But, when you really think about it, such people who believe this and live in accordance with that belief, they are in for the worst surprise that Jesus will not come and take their sins away on the day of judgment. They will have to account for everything. When they really think about it, what is the purpose of judgment day? If Jesus is going to take all your sins away, what is the purpose of judgment day? Judgment day is for judgment. Judgment day is a day on which Right? The things you did, you know, you're going to be judged based on the things you did and based on your actions. If someone tells you that your actions don't matter, this is something that Satan would say. Satan would tell you that it doesn't matter. Don't worry about your deeds. Somebody that already took your sins away. This is something Satan would say to try to encourage you to, you know, not worry about Judgment Day. You're supposed to be concerned about Judgment Day. This is your day. Right? Where your outcome for eternity will be, will be determined. Right? So, the outcome of Judgment Day will affect what will happen to you forever. So, for the next 100,000, 100 million years, right? Your state of affairs is going to be t determined on Judgment Day. And someone is telling you, don't worry. This person died for his sins. You, you don't worry about your deeds or anything like that. That covered. That's a trick. Right? In Islam, you are told to be mindful of your deeds and to always remember Allah. You pray regularly and seek forgiveness for your sins and you're accountable to Allah. Keep yourself accountable to Allah. This is the religion that can reform people. Right? And of course, you are dealing with Allah directly rather than dealing with idols or multiple gods or believing that they are, they are others equal to Him. You know, all of these are corruptions that entered into the religion of Christianity.
right? The religion of all the prophets is Islam. Islam is not something that started with the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. You find that when Jesus was preaching, he was calling people to Islam. In the Quran, it is said, Right? When Jesus sensed disbelief among his people, Call a man and sorry, Ila Law. He said, Who will be my helpers in the work of Allah? Call Al Habari Yuna. So said the disciples, Nahnu Ansaru Law. We will be the helpers in the work of Allah. Aman Nabilahi, we believe in Allah. Wash had the Anna Muslimun. And bear witness that we are Muslims. This is what they said in, in the Quran. Allah tells us what the disciples said. They said, we believe in Allah and bear witness that we are Muslims and if you look at even before that you have the prophet Abraham it was said to him his lord said to him submit right and aslim is the same root word as Islam he said I submit to the lord of the worlds so it's so Abraham, the prophet Abraham professed to be Muslim. Right? What was saw be her, Ibrahim, Bani, Yaqub. And this was the legacy of Abraham and Yaqub to their offspring. Ya Bani, ya, inna lo hastafa lakumuddina. Oh my children, right? They both said to their children, Oh my children. Allah has chosen for you, has established for you this deen. Falatamutunna illama antu muslimun. And deen here is way of life or religion. Allah has established for you this deen, this way of life. So do not die. Falatamutunna illama antu muslimun. Except that you are Muslims. So this is what Abraham and Jacob said to, said, it, said to the offspring do not die except as Muslims. And Abraham professed to be Muslim. And the Quran tells us that he was Muslim. Right? So all the prophets whom all the prophets were Muslim. Even Adam, the first prophet, the religion is submission to the will of Allah. The Quran tells us in that Dina Ainda Allah Islam, the religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. Right? Submission to the will of Allah. This is the, the only religion. Right? So all the prophets. Right? From the first to the last and all in between were Muslims. So this is the way. When you have Judaism and Christianity introducing tribalism and polytheism and idolatry and whatnot, these are in fact people going astray from Islam. The religion in the sight of Allah is Islam. And when you have people introducing these falsehoods of tribalism, and, 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 and racism and idolatry and polytheism and whatnot. These are people going away from Islam. So this is why when someone comes to Islam, it is said that they have reverted to Islam. They have come back to Islam. Islam was always here. Right? When you come to Islam, you revert, you come back to Islam. Right? When a, when, when a baby is born, that baby is born upon the deen. And it is his parents, his or her parents, that convinced them into some other form of religion. But the natural religion is Islam. You, you, you pray and you worship. You pray to and you worship the creator, the creator of the universe. Right? This is the this is the simple truth. All this stuff about being Jude, being of a special chosen lineage that guaranteed paradise, which is Judaism. And in Christianity, someone dying for your sins and there being three gods. And, and, and three in one and all this sorts of thing. This is all these all of these are innovations and people going astray from the deen of Islam. Right? That was practiced by Abraham, Moses, Adam, all the prophets. When people introduce these teachings, they are actually going astray. Right? So I'll stop there for now. And these are the chief reasons that I would say people that motivated me to come to Islam. Right? And when you listen to various people coming to Islam, these are the things that attract people. Right? That that there's monotheism, there's there's only one God, that there's no there's no racism and, and whatnot. And and the religion of Islam clearly forbids racism. 
you have Malcolm X. After he went to Mecca and returned, he proclaimed that Islam is the cure for racism. Right? And he referred to the various teachings of the Prophet and the teachings in the Quran. Right? The, the Prophet وسلم, said in his last sermon that an Arab is not better than a, non, than a non-Arab. And a non-Arab is not better than an Arab. And a white person is not better than a black person. And a black person is not better than a white. Except by taqwa. Right? Piety and good action. So it's according to your, your righteousness. Right? Your piety, your devoutness. And your fear of Allah. This is what distinguishes people in the eyes of Allah. In the sight of Allah. Right? Not your race and, and your texture of your hair. And, and all these sorts of things. Your DNA. All these sorts of teachings that, that arise in these other ways of life that led them to really fall into racism and racism is a sin that comes straight from Satan when you look at the story of Satan how he end up in his position it's because of racism believing that he is better than others based on the way he is created right there was this incident I'll briefly tell you where Iblis Satan was known as Iblis and he was among the angels Right? And Allah said to prostrate, to perform sajda, to bow down to Adam. So when Allah created Adam, he said to those present to bow down to Adam. Right? So the angels bowed down, but Iblis did not. Iblis is a jinn. He's not an angel. He was just in the company of the angels. So he had free will, whereas the angels don't have free will. And Iblis did not bow down. So the, the Quran says he was haughty and arrogant and he became one of the kafirin, one of the disbelievers, one of the rejecters, one of, one of those people who are condemned. Right? So, so he went from being in a lofty position, being in the company of the angels, to being shaitan, which is the accursed one. And why? Because he believed he was better than others. When Allah asked him why he did not bow down, when he commanded you, Right? Allah asked him why it is he did not bow down. He said that you created him from mud and he created me from fire, from smokeless fire. I am better than he. So here Satan is saying that because he created me from, from fire and him from mud, I am better than he. So he disobeyed the creator of the universe because of his own perception that he is better. And this is what is plaguing a lot of people in those other religions. They are, they are saying that they are better than others because of their race. And who is, who is motivating them to think these things? It's Satan. Right? Because this is the way Satan thinks. So, come to Islam, you'll be free from all of this. Right? And you worship one God and you'll live a righteous life without no false sense of security. Right? And you'll be accountable for your actions. And they prepare for self for judgment day. Right? So this is the way that is straight. Right? So check it out and read the Quran. Inshallah.